Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Philadelphia Catholic League quarterfinal round. It's a matchup between fellow 6A teams, Archbishop Wood and St. Joe's Prep, and it's live here on Bob Long Sports. Let's welcome you now inside our broadcast booth, Bob Long, Will Ryan, Danny Rovey, and Joe Shields on the camera. So thrilled for this one tonight, guys, because everything is on the line. Of course, a trip to the Palestra, the Philadelphia Catholic League semifinals. College basketball most hallowed ground opens its doors to the high school ranks twice every year. So that's the first thing, PCL. But you talk about the new paradigm of high school athletics, particularly with the Catholic League joining the PIAA 12 years ago. A trip to the States is on the line and the Catholic League only gets two, that's right, two spots from the 6A level. Roman Catholic is in a spot where they are going to advance no matter what based upon their number two ranking and their number two seed in the Catholic League. These two teams play here tonight. So the winner moves on to the Plestra, the winner moves on to the States, and the loser goes home. The stakes don't get any bigger than this, Bob. Uh, obviously, two teams looking to go to the Plestra. It's the four versus five, super competitive. And, and in the regular season matchup, we saw that competitiveness on display at Kelly Fieldhouse, a game that went into overtime, a game that we saw Jaleel Bethea put up 40 points, uh, the first Archbishop Wood basketball player since Colin Gillespie to put up 40 points in a game. Uh, the, the script writes itself. Super excited for this one. Yeah, of course, boys. You know, this is one of those games that you can't stop thinking about once you see it on the calendar. Jason Harrington, John Mosco, these are two proven coaches right here. These are two proven teams, and this is a proven classic we have on our hands from Warminster. Yeah, and Danny, your point there about the game at, at Kelly Fieldhouse, we knew that one was a classic. Jaleel Bethea with the 40 points, aforementioned by Will. But we talked to Jason Harrigan and his staff earlier this week, and what he said is, listen, they didn't feel as if they played their best game. And they feel as if it took the Catholic League MVP, Jaleel Bethea, with his best game of the year to beat them. But now, situation reversed. It's Archbishop Wood with the home game. Quite a intimate gym we have here. 800 people are going to fit into this barn tonight and maybe a little bit more. It's busting at the seams and well, a home court advantage is real here for Archbishop Wood. Yeah, there's no doubt at all. Uh, Archbishop Wood's been very, very good here. They've been very good all year long though. We've talked about some tough road wins for them. Uh, a great win at Newman Gretti, a great win at St. Joe's Prep. They get to take that momentum and add a great student section Wearing all yellow tonight, it's going to be a great atmosphere in this sold-out Richard R. Kelly Gymnasium. Of course, you know, that's the Wood Wackies right there, and that home court advantage is really, really big, you know, especially for a team like Wood. I mean, both of these teams have had the same exact record in the conference, but it's that head-to-head -head that gets them this home court, and that's something that they can really take advantage of given their record uh, playing at home. Other games across the Philadelphia Catholic League this evening, all four of them taking place at 7 o'clock p.m., Archbishop Ryan hosts West Catholic in a 3-6 game. That will be a classic. Newman Garetti is going to host Archbishop Carroll, who we had the chance to broadcast, guys, just on Wednesday night. Patriots very impressive. That'll be a challenge for Newman Garetti. And then Roman Catholic takes on Cardinal O'Hara. That The only reason this game is here tonight and between these two teams is because Cardinal O'Hara upset St. Joe's Prep just two days after the Hawks upset Roman Catholic by a total of 18 points. So up is down, left is right. The Catholic League is wild. And this is what you live for. It's nights like these in high school basketball. There's no doubt at all. And it's about to get underway. The clock has hit zero and we'll uh, send it over to the PA announcer. The longtime public address announcer for Archbishop Wood actually moved to Florida this year. We got a chance to get to know him at the Moscow Classic the last few years, does a tremendous job. Well, he flew back for this game. This game was important enough for him to be here. His son, who's been helping out with Archbishop Wood and Archbishop Ryan, he is at Archbishop Ryan here this evening, so it is a family affair there. Some high-level public address announcers, including Chris Carabello, who does games at LaSalle. Dan Hoban, who we got a chance to talk to on the Catholic League preview show, he does the work for Roman Catholic. It's high-level everything here in the Catholic League. And now we'll take a step aside. 
as we hear the tail end of the prayer and then the national anthem. The mother of your son and our mother too, we ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. Please remain standing for our national anthem. And we'll meet the starters from the visitors first. St. Joe's Prep. Owen Chamberlain introduced first a tremendous talent for St. Joe's Prep. Grand nephew of the great Wilt Chamberlain. While we're talking familial ties, that's Jaron McKee, son of head coach at Temple, Aaron McKee. Jalen Harper, what a road it's been for him. He has been so good as that third guard on this team ended up getting all Catholic honors this year. Matt Gorman is a key on the wing for this team. And last but not least, it's the big man, six foot nine, wide body, one of the best bigs in the state of Pennsylvania. That's Tristan Gillouette. Now let's meet the Vikings. Milan Dean, he can throw it down with reckless abandon. He can get up high and block shots as well. Key in the rebounding game. Josh Reed, key contributor for last year's state runner-up for Archbishop Wood. And Gus Salem, by way of California, his first year with the program, a transfer who's come in and done a great job. There's Carson Howard, double-double machine. He against Gillouette will be one of the key matchups this evening. And there he is, the first time since he's been honored with the Catholic League MVP honors, Jaleel Bethea. Boy, can't wait to watch this matchup, Bob. We got Archbishop Wood donning the Nike whites. On the right side, we got St. Joe's Prep donning the Nike blacks. It's a great jersey matchup as well. And a good referee crew as well, just announced by the public address. Quarterfinal night in Catholic League. Four balls across the league are going up right now. And in a short hour and a half, we're going to know who's going to the Palestra. How's that sound, Danny? Wow, I mean, the stakes cannot be higher. And, you know, this Archbishop Wood team has proved themselves tough at home. Uh, you know, in some really tight games. The last time that we were here, that Wood LaSalle game, I really love what I've seen from every player on the floor, but especially Jalil Bethea and Gus Salem. Both those players were able to lead their Vikings in a tough fourth quarter stretch. The question is, could they be able to do it tonight? This is Gus Salem and St. Joe's Prep. They come out man-to-man -man defensively. Yeah, it's Olin Chamberlain on the ball, not known for his scoring. It's his ball handling and defense. Fantastic move by Jalil Bethea. Yeah, Jalil Bethea right there, an acrobatic layup to start things off right there. I mean, just a tremendous athlete. Again, one of the main reasons why he's the PCL MVP. Harper, a lot of contact, a good foul call. Right in front of that wood wacky student section. Another look, good, good job by that uh, wing player to go back behind. He took Bethea with him. 
and created a nice opportunity for Harper. Yeah, it was a 1-4 set from Prep, and Harper just took it by himself and gets to the line. Jalen Harper's a 75% free throw shooter on the year. Big ups to our buddy Huck Palmer for providing us with the statistics to set the stage. A horn set early from Wood. Howard with patience. There's Gus Salem. Little short from three, and a long rebound comes down to Harper. You know, Gus Salem right there, it's still a pretty high quality look for a player of his caliber from three. Nearly the finish, a lot of contact, wasn't called. This is your MVP in the Catholic League. Jaleel Bethea hangs and couldn't hit it. Jaron McKee. Nice recover defensively by Wood. Went with the left hand, that's a tough shot. Milan Dean, it's three on three the other way. Dean, he wants it himself. Couldn't get the roll. And somehow the ball stays off the baseline. All of a sudden, five on two. And a pretty good look for Olin Chamberlain. Well, you see the strategy for Archbishop Wood. They're looking to get to the rim. They've done it three or four times now. But St. Joe's Prep has had the bodies and the shot contesters in the lane ready for it. You know, Bob, yeah, we, we, we know that this Archbishop Wood team is very physical, but it's all about finding the best look. That right there was a phenomenal look uh, for number three, Milan Dean. It's that lateral movement along the perimeter against that man-to-man -man defense that creates the driving lane for Dean. Carson Howard, a good high hedge there to make sure that McKee was contained. And that time Wood just switches. It's a like for like on the handoff. Howard going to make life difficult on Gillouette. Now St. Joe's Prep, they get the switch. And Gorman able to take advantage. Matt Gorman, a tremendously efficient player. 46.9% from three, 53% from the field. Very efficient, doesn't take bad shots. Harper is the one who has the task of guarding Jaleel Bethea. Bethea, that's a tough shot from the corner. It was halfway down, too. Good closeout. Yeah, tough look right there, but again, Bob, that was a phenomenal closeout right there. If you have that matchup, that's exactly what you need to do on a player like Jaleel Bethea. Milan Dean, he wants to get to the lane again. The teardrop. Wow, great one-two move right there with the Euro and then the flow to the pair. Back cut, there's Gorman, and he just missed the bunny. Milan Dean caught ball watching. Reed playing off two feet, and good things happen. That's just unbelievable athleticism by the junior. Well, the driving lanes are there for Archbishop Wood, even the two they haven't hit. They've been able to get where they wanted, when they wanted to get there. St. Joe's Prep, more of the same. Every rebound's an absolute battle. Bethea, the lob! Hits the Lundin. Timeout! Bethea threw it up, but it wasn't that high off the rim. Watch Milan Dean go up, get it, and he has to almost keep it up there. He brings it back above the rim and slams it home. What a finish for the sophomore. Richard R. Kelly Gymnasium, you may need to call it the Richard R. Kelly Airport because he just took off there. <laughs> well, a 30-second timeout. Let's take a look inside that Archbishop Wood huddle. Good look here from Joe Shields. Not much to talk about. They're getting penetration. St. Joe's Prep certainly is going to contest, but some great looks in transition for Archbishop Wood. There's no doubt. And when St. Joe's Prep has had those driving opportunities, it's been with the offhand. They haven't really been able to get back to their right. Good scouting by Archbishop Wood and John Moscow's staff. Four minutes and five seconds to play in the first quarter. Energy. Palpable, tension, cut it with a knife. One team goes home. 
There is a state championship caliber team on the floor tonight that is not going to have the chance to advance any further. Jordan Ellerby into the game for St. Joe's Prep. Matt Gorman takes a seat. St. Joe's Prep now puts it in their pocket. Ellerby has it now. And a grab is called against Milan Dean. His first, team's first. I beg your pardon, that's the second on the team. Still just the first on Dean. Yeah, Wood's still defending in this uh, this tight man, and I really like that. They're able to kind of compress the St. Joseph's prep offense uh, in a nice manner. Milan Dean just checked into the game. He replaces Josh Reed. Deuce Maxey, that is. Yep, beg your pardon, that's right. Jaron McKee, that's a tough step back. Yeah, Jaron McKee right there, highly contested shot. Able to get that one off, though, with efficiency. It's one that Archbishop Wood will live with defensively, I think. Five seconds called against Milan Dean. Olin Chamberlain, a nice job on the ball defensively. And Bob, we always talk about the five second rule. Absolutely the right interpretation of the call. There's yep. no forward movement, never breaks the shoulder. Nice job by these PIAA officials doing this quarterfinal game. 3.05. You're right, Will. We have issues at times with that call, but not that one. Ellerby, that's so much contact. No call. Letting them play. Good cut to the basket, and Carson Howard couldn't hit it. Got his own rebound. Thought that there was yeah, a lot of contact from Tristan Gillouette. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I mean, the refs right here obviously letting the boys play, but that's that physicality right there. You'd love to see in the front court. Just definitely confusing. That's a no call. One there that could have been called on Milan Dean. Okay, hey, listen, they're setting the standard in the benchmark. You want it to be consistent, and it has been. Gillouette, oh, really nice job to move the feet, but then had trouble with the finish. Yeah, Salem in good position. Gus Salem made him put it on the deck, and at that point he couldn't take advantage of the mismatch. Bethea, oh, they call it a push-off against Jaleel Bethea. He's got words for the baseline official. The call came from in front of the St. Joe's prep bench. You can't really tell from our angle, but it looked like a, a good stop in this movement, if you know what I'm saying, Bob. It wasn't like he continued to go forward as the arm extended. He stopped on a dime, and, and that definitely created some of the space. The referee deemed that the off arm created the other part of it. McKee to guard him on that high hedge. Howard now back in position. He against Gillouette. What a matchup this will be all night. It's a travel. Extra steps inside from Tristan Gillouette. Let's, he was getting where he needed to go. Yeah, there's no doubt. He did a great job getting to his spot. He picks up his dribble. His right foot moves. We can't really tell with the left. You know what? I had the left foot moving, so maybe yep. by, by conduit, we might have had this, the uh, travel. No doubt. <laughs> Man, great on-ball defense by the Pret. What a find and what a finish. That's a thing of beauty. Bob, we talk about it all the time. Catch high, finish high if you're a big fella, and Carson Howard certainly did that. Yeah, exactly right there. And uh, Jaloba Thea showcasing that awesome court vision right there. Again, finding him up top, great put up. Put up. Great look for McKee, just off the elbow, couldn't hit it. What a play by St. Joe's Pratt McKee. Hawks are attacking the glass. One more, give him two offensive rebounds and two points for his troubles, Jalen Harper. That play right there is the epitome of grit, and that's exactly what St. Joseph's Prep need to do. They're down uh, by three points right now as we near the final minute uh, this quarter. Might have been Harper that poked the ball away from Bethea as well. Bethea, he is fouled. A grab inside, that'll go against Ellerby. Yeah, nice take there by Milan Dean. He's always looking to get downhill. Not so much a shooter, more of a driver, and he did a good job there. Dean will shoot two. He lit the lamp earlier. Milan Dean, a 72 and a half free throw, percent, free throw percentage on the season. Jaron McKee takes, or beg your pardon, that's going to be Olin Chamberlain taking a seat. Matt Gorman on in his place. 
Yeah, it's really just going to be a, a one-man rotation off the bench for St. Joe's Prep. Something that we saw years for years with Speedy Morris, Jason Harrigan doing the same. Speedy Morris in the building today as well. Uh, Love to see that. Yeah, great to see a legend here. Forty seconds to play, first quarter. And I think they got that score wrong on the big board. I think they allocated the one free throw to the wrong team. We think we got it right. 12-10. Corner three for the lead. Yes. And it's Matt Gorman. Good ball movement around the perimeter. Yeah, one of the best shooters in the PCL. There's no doubt about it. 15 seconds left. And that's Bea. Isan Bea. Still plenty of time, Jaron McKee with six. Open three for Ellerby. Down to two. Would not count if it went. Nearly took down the speaker system here at Archbishop Wood. But through eight minutes, we have ourselves a classic brewing. Let's look now inside this St. Joe's prep huddle. Danny, it was a late finish to the quarter here. Four straight, might, might have even been six straight by St. Joe's Prep to end this quarter. What was the key? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously uh, it's, the, it's the tempo that these offenses have been running. I think that's been definitely one of the key talking points uh, throughout this first quarter. Uh, I think that, you know, both teams are, you know, meeting each other in a tight defensive set, and that's creating, you know, a lot of compression, I think, around the perimeter, which is making it hard to score. But these offenses continue to move the ball extremely quick. And, you know, it'll really be the key to the second quarter if they can keep doing that. Will, your thoughts? Yeah, well, we saw, um, excuse me, Olin Chamberlain control the tempo really well. There's a lot of on-ball pressure as well from St. Joe's Prep. It's been noticeable. Uh, we saw the 1-5 second call, but a lot of times where the count was going and Archbishop Wood sort of had to adjust. When Archbishop Wood is able to get out in transition, they've been really dangerous. And when you're allowed, and when Jaleel Bethea has space to get downhill, really dangerous both going to the rim or finding Carson Howard. But the half-court defense from St. Joe's Prep has been really impressive through this first quarter. Take you back to the floor here as St. Joe's Prep exits the huddle. Score still the same on the scoreboard. No, uh, no change at the end of the quarter. That's true. That is true. We'll keep an eye on that one. That doesn't sound right to me. Pass to the corner, and that's going to be thrown into the backcourt. I'll tell you what we'll do. We're going to change our score to match what they have here. But yeah, we <laughs> cognitive, you know, we're, we're, we're going to throw it out there that we, uh, we might have one, one point differential. We'll keep an eye out here. Again, I think it came down to the free throws where Harper went one of two. We had it as 12-9, Archbishop Wood. And after St. Joe's Prep made that free throw, it went to 13-9 as opposed to the other way around. Nice use of the uh, jump stop there. Jaleel Bethea, nothing but net. Yeah, it's such a hard play to guard, uh, you know, from out there, but that's exactly what Archbishop Wood wants to do. They want to feed their MVP the ball, lets that one fly. That's a great tray for the Wood Vikings. Really good contest by Milan Dean, and now he leads the break. And interesting there, they're going to call that on the floor. He felt the contact and tried to go up with the three-point shot. Yeah, we'll take a look at it. That's a, that's a pro move by Milan Dean. And, and frankly, I think he probably was going up there. Uh, now, the interpretation of the spirit rule of it, could yep. be a yeah, spirit of the game, but just by watching that replay, the contact was in the shooting motion. Salem now to run the point. I think it really frees Jaleel Bethea up when he can play off the basketball. He can certainly do it. He's a Catholic League MVP, he can play anywhere. But him off ball, that's not a great shot from Dean. Not a lot of ball movement from the Vikings. No, you want to see him going to the rim. There's no doubt about it. Inside they go. Gillouette. Yes. 
Yeah, I think Guillouette right there is really happy to get that uh, layup off. Uh, obviously, his last time down low in the paint, um, it was taken back for his travel. Right now, the refs have some. Yeah, Milan Dean dinged That's up. And he's going to be taking a look at over by the bench, by the nice, the, uh, the tremendous training staff here at Archbishop Wood. 6.42 to play, second quarter. It's a Catholic League quarterfinal here on Bob Long Sports. Many thanks to Sue O'Neill, John Mosco, and the rest of his staff for having us here this evening. And for the many times we've been able to be here all year long. St. Joe's Prep was uh, able to set up their press a little bit because of the dead ball. And that's going to be a grab inside. St. Joe's Prep doesn't like the call, but that's the second on Jalen Harper. So when we take a look at this replay, it's an elevator screen play for Jaleel Bethea. What happens is St. Joe's Prep jump switches that. Jordan Ellerby comes out on Bethea, so not to give him an open three. But that opens up the slip for Reed. Bethea. Wide open up the floor. Throw it down, Mr. Ellerby. My goodness, known for his shooting and his pull-up jump shot, getting above the rim as well. Yeah, boys, we have some high flyers right here from the Richard R. Kelly Gymnasium. Love to see a play like that. Great look for Green, it's good. How wow. about the youngster with the answer? How about the answer right there, exactly, I mean, Able to really respond from that uh, tremendous slam. That was a beautiful shot from far. Gillouette, an able and willing passer from the post. And now mismatch inside. In comes Carson Howard. Really nice switch there by Wood when they needed it. They force St. Joe's prep right back into the offensive set. Ellerby. Contact, and he's fouled by Gus Salem. Yeah, nice call by Kyle O'Neill on the near side. A nice pull-up jump shot by Ellerby. He was open, which caused Salem to overreact a little bit. A and he hit him right on the arm. Another look, and yep, that replay certainly vindicates that referee, Kyle O'Neill. I mean, what a huge three-point play opportunity here uh, for Prep. I mean, of course, Ellerby pulling up from afar. Like you said, Will, uh, startled, you know, uh, true the contact. Yeah, I mean, that's tremendous for the Hawks right there. That's exactly what you need. Yeah, and Ellerby is a fantastic free throw shooter as well. 83% on this season. Truly a sixth starter for the St. Joe's Prep team. Uh, very willing to sub him into the game for, for any of those four guards. You know, it's so crucial to, uh, you know, your team on the road, obviously, from the charity stripe. It's going to be uh, challenging uh, with the student section, uh, you know, right to the right in this half. But obviously that composure is huge, uh, maintained by LRB. Michael Green with another touch. Bethea again playing off the ball. Rises and hits. Yeah, the word that comes to mind right there is smooth. I mean, what an excellent show from Bethea. Yeah, Olin Chamberlain had his hand out, but that didn't matter. It wasn't high enough. He can't really play too much better defense than that, though. Gillouette. Everybody cleared out for him. That's excellent. Man, just feeding the big fella and saying, go to work. He's got about two inches on Carson Howard, but the, the weight class is pretty similar. And here's a giveaway. Jaron McKee attacks. Too strong, nothing easy. You wonder if the rim bouncing a little bit from Ellerby's attempt affected the shot. Good hands, open three, Green. Two for two for Michael Green. Michael Green right there, in a position, the ball came to him, fired that one off from far. That's a huge one to extend this lead to four. You get to games like this, Oh! Big finish! Count it and one. So this St. Joe's prep play is beautiful. You're going to hit the high post. McKee's going to set a back screen. I think Gorman's ready to set a screen for McKee to come out. Josh Reed's anticipating that play. McKee sees nobody between him and the rim. Gillouette delivers a beautiful pass, and then the help commits the foul. Great job and great play design by Jason Harrigan and his staff. 
How about the youth stepping up here? For St. Joe's Prep, it's all youth. McKee, a sophomore. Chamberlain, a sophomore. But Michael Green for Archbishop Wood, a sophomore. That's Jalen Harper, the junior, committing the foul on Jaleel Bethea. Good to see Milan Deans all right, checking back into the game along with Deuce Maxey, replacing Gus Salem and Josh Reed. Bethea, what a step through. Wow, almost finished. Too much English on that one. Now that's, that is interesting there. It's not a technical foul. It is a bench warning. It was St. Joe's prep in transition. So you can understand that call a little bit more. Yeah, and, and what it was, there was a swipe down on Gillouette there that Jason Harrigan really wanted to call. Uh, didn't get it, but good job by the official not going right to the technical foul. And yep. in a game like this, you don't want the, the refs or the coaches really to decide it. It's another back cut off the back screen. Matt Gorman ties the game. What discipline by these St. Joe's prep kids. Salem. There's Milan Dean. Nobody there in the corner. What a job by Maxi. It's going to be uncontested for Howard. Wow, what a find right there from Maxi. He's pinned back deep in the corner. He finds Howard coming in with the cut. It's a great attempt right there from the, from the Vikings. Bailed out Milan Dean, whose feet left the floor, and he didn't know where he was going with it. Tough step back for Jaron McKee. Oh, it's been his night so far. My goodness. Number one in black. Just an unbelievable step back. Highly contested. High degree of difficulty, it doesn't matter. Number one in the scorebook and number one in the hearts of St. Joe's Prep Hawk fans, Jaron McKee. I mean, that shot from McKee is truly remarkable, guys. And you know, there have been a couple instances in this uh, first half where he's nailed shots from way downtown. Hands in the face, he says it does not matter. That's a huge bucket for the Hawks. Mike Green takes a well-deserved seat after knocking down two threes. Good minutes from the sophomore. Gus Salem has a good look and hits. It's not a bad closeout. There's some great defense being played on both sides. You'd never know it. Yeah, at this level, I suppose it's just you can't let him be comfortable on the catch because while the contest was good, he was able to kind of shoot it in rhythm. Nice job by a great shooter. Number 23 in white, Gus Salem. I mean, how about the collective shooting from Archbishop Wood, guys? I mean, the, the, the numbers have to be through through the roof at this point. He'll try it again. Jaron McKee, no. It's a man's rebound by Bethea as well. Here we go. Bethea wants it and he's blocked. Gillouette. We definitely aren't letting the ref hear that one right there on uh, what he thought was a missed foul call up to the rim. Uh, no way Gillouette. though. Yeah, no, no way. that looked clean to me. Uh, that's just great rim protection exactly. by Tristan Gillouette. And I think what Carson Howard kind of defending his teammate there, he's saying maybe a block on Gorman, but that the real life block by Gillouette was clean. Well, that ball's still live, and Milan Dean was asking for a foul. And now he's not getting back on defense as well. Gus Salem called for the personal. There's the stalk of one coach, John Mosco, down the sideline. Wow, and you can see that both students' actions. Wow, look at that. 1.52 to go. It's flying here today. Next foul for Archbishop Wood would put St. Joe's Prep in the bonus. Open three for Chamberlain. We're tied. Olin Chamberlain Jr. My goodness. Remember the name. Just a sophomore. Yeah, he doesn't take a lot of threes, but he knocks him down at a good enough clip. Nice job by number zero in black. And that pass was at the feet of Carson Howard, a giveaway with 123 to play in the second quarter. That's a key turnover right there. You know, obviously, St. Joe's is prepped. There's not too much time on the clock left, but just enough where they can really take their time in this possession and get off to a one-score lead. Uh, 
you know, the possibility presents itself. Can't script this stuff. The first one went to overtime. First matchup between these two teams. First quarter was a one-point lead. We weren't sure who had that one-point lead. And now it's tied with a minute 15 to go in the half. Everything you want and more. Gillouette, big time catch. Couldn't finish it, but Ellerby wanted it more. And now Ellerby got it to Gorman. Bang! Bang! Wow, I mean, what a stroke there from Gorman. Fantastic job by Ellerby to get the offensive rebound and dish it out while he was falling down. What a play. I think we got a bailout foul there. Now, I, I think it's the right call, but Deuce, Matt, I beg your pardon, Milan Dean was going one on four against that St. Joe's prep defense. But he'll have a chance with two at the line, 49 seconds left. If we were at the college level, we'd say he was maybe going two for one but no shot clock. <laughs> Dean now two of three from the line. Bethea maybe getting a little extended rest before halftime here, taking a, taking a seat for the first time today. One of two, a second time. And for a defensive possession to get Josh Reed back in there it makes a little bit of sense. Perhaps if they get, a, get the ball back, Bethea will be back at the scorer's table. That's really good defense there from Carson Howard. Ellerby now down under 30 seconds to play. Open three. Big rebound there. That's why you put Josh Reed on the floor. He's gonna lead the break. It's a blocking foul and they wave it off. They did not count the bucket. Two things to adjudicate. Block or charge. I think it's probably the right call and wave it off I think is right too. Anyway. The bucket's good. They the just, bucket is good. They wow. just made that call. So I, I suppose the question would become, is he in the, sh so does that, if that ball does not go in, is it a shooting foul? I, I think it probably is. So, so I don't, even though it was seemed after the play, I don't, I don't I, hate the call because I think if the ball doesn't go in, they call a, they call a shooting foul. Now yeah. what are we doing here? Now what are so we doing? They waved it off, so they counted it good, and now they're waving it off, and Archbishop Wood gets the ball underneath their offensive hoop. My goodness, chaos here in Warminster. <laughs> wow. Milan Dean, big finish. 11 seconds to go. And the ball's in the hands of the super sophomore, Jaron McKee. Jared Down McKee. under four seconds to play. Jaron McKee was bumped there by Milan Dean, just showing you this game's starting to get real gritty. We'll go to the half tide, why not? Why not? What else would you expect here this evening? 33-33, our halftime score, and, and certainly the score indicative of the matchup. It has been as even as it gets. Great playmaking on both sides and great defense on both sides as well. Yeah, well, you know, how about the uh, you know adaptability uh, from from both Harrigan and uh, John Moscow? I mean, they're able to really you know work these uh, these these play sets in a manner that creates excellent scoring opportunities for, for both sides. I mean, tied at 33 apiece. I mean, we would end this game thinking it'd be a really, really tight game. And, you know, throughout one, it's certainly that. We'll take a break, albeit a quick one. Second half begins in less than 10 minutes. Dunphy Ford is Mayfair's neighborhood Ford store. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation, our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dumpy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dumpy difference. You'll be glad you did. My name is Patrick Donahue, a franchise consultant with FranChoice, the premier network of franchise consultants in America. FranChoice is a company that helps people 
find a franchise business that's the perfect fit for them. We work with the people who want to own a business but don't really know how to find one that's both a top-notch opportunity and a great match. We specialize in franchise opportunities with the following three characteristics. Low investment, high margin, and rapid break-evens. The best thing about our service is that it's free to the public. We're paid by franchise companies for this service. The process is simple. First, we do an introduction. Then the candidate provides me with information. We have a consultation based on that information. And we build what's called the model. Once we have that model, we will share that with three great opportunities that match your criteria. I will follow up with you through the entire process. Obviously, the best opportunities fit the criteria mentioned above. And the right way to find those opportunities is to spend some time with the people who work with the very best franchise companies looking to expand in your local area. I'm humbled by your consideration, and I look forward to speaking with you soon. They said it couldn't be done, but somehow CCM was able to close this home in just 21 days. Carl, how'd you pull this off? Oh, hard work, dedication, grinding. Were you ever worried? Well, you know, Chloe, they pinned us in deep in the second bedroom, uh, inspection issues, but we regrouped. Knew there was still a lot in play. Well, I'm sure the Franklins were pleasantly surprised. We got a good organization here. A lot to look forward to. Good luck with the next close. And there you have it. Cross Country Mortgage is dedicated to getting it done. So, it's time for your business to renew your lease. Or perhaps you're right-sizing or relocating. This can be an exciting time. Hmm. But it's also a major project to undertake. Hundreds of decisions to make. Hmm. Some of which may impact your business for the next decade. You know you need an expert on your side from start to finish. What if this expert had no conflicts of interest? no landlords to answer to, and a fiduciary responsibility to work solely in your best interest. Someone who knows the questions to ask, the levers to pull, the pitfalls to avoid. Enter the experts at Gola Corporate Real Estate. They've seen it all over the course of thousands of transactions in dozens of industries. Gola gets it. And what if those experts came with a team? Subject matter experts to manage everything that comes with this process. Space planning and design, relocation planning and budgeting, helping you manage your vendors, construction oversight, all with zero out-of-pocket cost to you. A turnkey experience that adds real value, value that flows right to your bottom line. Gola gets it. We've been partnering with clients like you for over 40 years, and we know what's important. Solving problems, creating flexibility, protecting and stretching your dollars. Philadelphia-based with a national presence. Get to know GOLA. GOLA gets it. At Meineke, we care about your family. So this winter, let Meineke keep your car on the road, saving time and money. Take advantage of Meineke's complete auto repair services, whether it's tires, brakes, exhaust, or tune-ups, at Meineke, we do it all. And all services are backed by Meineke's nationwide guarantee. Whatever car repairs you need, come to Meineke. Because at your locally owned and operated Meineke, we do car care right. What does this win mean? Been with the family for a long time. With our team chemistry, it was bound to happen. Just close, baby! Such a big win from Cross Country Mortgage. Dedicated to getting it done. Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report. Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report live on Bob Long Sports. Today, we're going to talk about the offensive line and our man of the hour, the chef, the man himself. This year, you're going to see all four guys run. They all bring a different style. The quarterback is going to read the defensive end's eyes and make a determination. Am I going to keep this football or am I going to hand it off to the running back? And that is generally the point of the RPO. Look who we have. We have Chris Perangeli, our guest picker for the evening. 
Dunphy Ford is Mayfair's neighborhood Ford store. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation, our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dumpy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dumpy difference. You'll be glad you did. My name is Patrick Donahue, a franchise consultant with FranChoice, the premier network of franchise consultants in America. FranChoice is a company that helps people find a franchise business that's the perfect fit for them. We work with the people who want to own a business but don't really know how to find one that's both a top-notch opportunity and a great match. We specialize in franchise opportunities with the following three characteristics. Low investment, high margin, and rapid break-evens. The best thing about our service is that it's free to the public. We're paid by franchise companies for this service. The process is simple. First we do an introduction, then the candidate provides me with information. We have a consultation based on that information, and we build what's called the model. Once we have that model, we'll share that with three great opportunities that match your criteria. I will follow up with you through the entire process. Obviously the best opportunities fit the criteria mentioned above, and the right way to find those opportunities is to spend some time with the people who work with the very best franchise companies looking to expand in your local area. I'm humbled by your consideration and I look forward to speaking with you soon. Just about two minutes until we get back underway here in the third quarter. It's all tied up between Archbishop Wood and St. Joe's Prep. Two 6A teams, the four and the five seeds in the Philadelphia Catholic League, a trip to the Palestra and a trip to the States on the line. Welcome back inside our broadcast booth. Bob Long, Will Ryan, and Danny Rovey. Danny, let's start with you. What, yeah. was the, what was the story of the first half? Oh, wow. I mean, I spoke about it a little bit at the end of the uh, first half. I mean, I love the way that this game has been coached. I think that both teams have done an excellent job finding the basket, but also defending the basket. I think that both teams have played in tremendous defensive sets. They've kept this game tight. It's been back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I think, honestly, the winner of this game is going to be whoever capitalizes off of missed baskets in transition. Well, yeah, key for the second. Yeah, there's no doubt the perimeter defense has been elite. It's which big man kind of can establish that paint uh, interior defense. We've seen Milan Dean be able to get downhill quite a few times. Jaleel Bethea downhill a couple times as well. And then on the, uh, excuse me, on the Archbishop Wood defensive side, we've seen uh, Olin Chamberlain able to drive and kick out to shooters very well. And Olin Chamberlain knocked down a big three. Uh, so both teams have been making shots. We'll see if that continues in the second half, but we know the defensive intensity is going to be just as high. Uh, it's, we're in for a really, really good one. The atmosphere here as well, it's as good as the game. Uh, you can't say enough about this venue and this atmosphere here in Warminster. One of our favorites in the Catholic League, no doubt about it. Guys, the stars have arrived. Jaron McKee, as well as the Catholic League MVP, Joe Bethea, and a deserving Catholic League MVP at that. But the role players, Matt Gorman has hit a couple of huge threes. Michael Green is two for two from beyond the arc coming off the bench for Archbishop Wood. It's those guys that have made the difference and have forced the defense to guard from sideline to sideline and guard all five guys on the floor. Yeah, you mentioned something about Matt Gorman. The great Huck Palmer was able to put together a, a, a list of all the players that received all Catholic votes. And, and Matt Gorman, uh, on, the, on, these, on this list, how about second in three-point percentage this year? How about tied for ninth in uh, turnover plus minus? So that means he's forcing more turnovers than he's giving away. And then fifth in steals per game. And tenth in field goal percentage. I mean, the kid gets the job done in a very efficient manner. So one last look inside the St. Joe's Prep huddle. About ready to get going here in the third quarter. Big ups to our buddy Joe Shields on camera. And we're also missing our good buddy Brady Joyce, who is up enjoying some time in Canada. He has been a loyal 
cameraman over the course of the year. Both these guys doing an excellent job. All part of the Bob Long Sports family. Include Jeff Sharilla in that category as well, who was out on Wednesday. Bethea is fouled by Matt Gorman on the first possession of the second half. Nice curl by Bethea off the uh, high off ball screen by Harper, excuse me, by Howard. And Bethea will earn two shots at the line. Bethea has been tremendous at the free throw line this year. There was a stretch this year over four games where he was 25 for 25 from the line. We talked to John Mosco on the Philadelphia Catholic League preview show, and he said that he needed, I believe, 22, maybe it was 25 he needed, uh, against uh, Lansdale Catholic in the last game of the season to become the only Catholic League player since, what, Eddie Griffin? Eddie Griffin, I believe. To average 25. He ended up just shy at 24.8. But his name will go on the board here, and number in the rafters as one of the all-time greats here at Archbishop Wood, just a junior. And Gillouette couldn't handle it. He thought he was grabbed by Carson Howard. That's going to be a physical matchup inside. Has been so far. Seven thirty to go, third quarter. I'll tell you what, I love the full court man-to-man -man from St. Joe's Prep today. All the way to the hoop. A power dribble there by Josh Reed. Yeah, how about the driver hit there from Josh Reed? I mean, you see him, you know, that ball, he keeps it high when he's driving in to his advantage. He uses that phenomenal lay. Fortunate for St. Joe's Prep. Now Harper wants to get to the hole. He's blocked. Great job by Carson Howard. Gorman to scoop up the loose change. Great job by Gorman collecting himself, getting to a spot where he's comfortable about at the, the center of the free throw line, and then knocking down the 15-foot jump shot. Good job by Matt Gorman. Contact, and it's a block. I think there's lateral movement towards the painted area. It's going to go against Jaron McKee. The block charge adjudicators are back, Bob. And right here, Jaron McKee slides in that right foot, absolutely still moving. Nice call by the baseline official. A difficult call to make as well. I can understand both sides of that argument, but I think they got it right. Yeah, still definitely a great sacrificial attempt there from McKee. Obviously, we'll see if uh, Bethea can capitalize off this. Three for three from the foul line to start the second half. Almost an eerily quiet moment in this gymnasium here right now on the momentary stoppage. <laughs> Nothing to it for Jaleel Bethea. There's a muted MVP chant. They gotta keep that going. He sure is very deserving. Gillouette moving with purpose. Just couldn't finish it. That should stay here. I love that possession from St. Joe's Prep, though. Gillouette, you know, he has, he's a very ample passer out of the post, but that time he saw an opportunity to just keep going, and he did. Unable to finish, but I, I think St. Joe's Prep will take that look. He's a guy I've been looking to really work the ball out of uh, this entire game. They've done a great job at that, you know, feeding him in the post. That's going to be a tough shot. Instead, he gives it up. Here we go. This is big on big. Tristan Gillouette wins the battle. Wow. wow. And you wonder if a double is necessary to contain Gillouette. He's been able to get where he wants to get today. Yeah, I mean, the word that comes to mind, or rather the phrase that comes to mind is bully ball right there from Gillouette. Great pass inside. It's going to be tough to go up with that. Great defense inside without fouling. Chamberlain, there was a lot of contact there. Could have been a foul called. Jaleel Bethea, and Gorman takes one. Wave that one off. Great decision by Matt Gorman. Yeah, that's a great foul by Matt Gorman. The, the proverbial take foul, they're kind of doing away with it in the NBA. But here on the high school level, still allowed and a good take. And here's a look on the other side there. Again, I think that nudge is enough to call a foul. Yeah, I, I think maybe a missed block there on Milan Dean. Josh Reed created just that little bit of separation, and that was enough to rise up. Josh Reed knows his game so well. Always consistent on the defensive end. Good driver, good pull-up jump shooter. 
Really solid player for these Vikings. Jordan Ellerby gets to a great spot and finishes. Yeah, how about the stop on a dime right there from Ellerby? Yeah. That was an easy lay right there, uncontested. It's as free as you're going to get. Josh Reed taking things into his own hands. What a game. I mean, both teams now trading blows on the interior. This has really become a driving game now. Harper. Great job by Carson Howard to get back into the play defensively. Gillowet keeps that pivot foot the entire time. <laughs> that is tremendous by the junior. My goodness, what post presence. Scouts are drooling. There's contact without a call. Held ball situation. Let's see if we can catch the tail end of that one on the replay. I don't know if we will. Nah, not going to get it. That's a tough no call there. Gillouette, no chance he was straight up. No, he definitely was over the back of Howard there. What a tremendous atmosphere, though. The two student sections dueling a little bit. The players absolutely going at it. And the quality of play, not just the intensity, but... You know, oh. a lot of times you can find yourself lost in the game a little bit, but you think about that move by Gillouette, you think about the drives by Reed, you think about that up and under by Ellerby. It's just been tremendous quality as well. Yeah, I mean, this is what you really live for in the PCL. Obviously, a packed gym on a Friday night, you know, the stands are filled, uh, students roaring. I mean, this, this right here is what we live for. Yeah, and a shout out to all of our viewers as well. If you're watching this game and know someone who might want to watch it, make sure to send that link out. Uh, we want to make sure as many people uh, can access this link as possible. Well, I'm glad you brought up the Ellerby scoop in the lane because that's one there that you might have St. Joe's prep fans saying, hey, it's a travel. But he did an excellent job. Oh, I guess that's uh, so you'd have Wood fans saying that's a travel. You'd have St. Joe's fans saying what a move comes to the jump stop, and at that point, you still can move with one foot to get where you needed to go, and so did just that to get into the lane, then lifts and scores. It was a great no call, excellent discipline by this referee crew, and you can have an issue with a call here or there, but I think this crew has controlled things very well. They've been consistent in that it's gonna take uh, quite the, a bit of contact to draw a foul call. And here we are, three minutes plus into this third quarter. Archbishop Wood hasn't committed a foul. St. Joe's Prep in no real foul trouble with three team fouls. And a great chess match going on right here. An all-guard lineup for both squads right now. Both big men getting a blow. Jalen Harper. I think Dean got a piece of it, perhaps, or maybe got a piece of Harper, one or the other. But they, that's a tough shot. You have to give that one to him. Wow, the fair from mid-range, that's money territory right there. Doesn't matter if a guy's on him, he'll, he'll knock that one down. Great lateral, move, lateral movement by Milan Dean. Jay, uh, Jordan Ellerby known for that pump fake and dribble pull up. Milan Dean just beats him to the spot, great footwork. Jaron McKee a little short. It's a tough it, shot right there. Almost put it in, Reed has it, yes! Josh Reed has six quick ones in the last two minutes. Yeah, and I think Prep needs to get uh, Gillouette back into the game. He's at the scores table, and Harrigan, yeah. great time out there. Yep. Why wait for the stoppage? Get him in there. And they tried to get him in during that mop cleanup uh, time, and the referees told him to go back to the scores table. Maybe they're a little late, not too sure about the reason why he wasn't allowed to check into the game. Maybe he didn't check in at all, not sure, but... 342, little game reset for you here. Largest lead for Archbishop Wood. We just said, well, largest lead for Archbishop Wood at six, if you can believe that. And St. Joe's Prep, every time that one team has had a couple of point lead, the other has responded. Danny, what do you think St. Joe's Prep looks to do coming out of this timeout? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's really about finding the offensive rhythm again, right? I mean, there have been a couple of possessions where, you know, they've really missed. Oh. I guess I'm talking here. We have a little chant. Appreciate well, you guys. You know, you know, there have been some possessions. I think that you know this uh, St. Joe's prep team has missed out on, uh, especially with buckets. Um, you know, and, and and that is 
partly due to some you know calls made against them. Uh, but I think honestly, it's just about valuing each possession uh, here on out through the end of the third quarter. You know, just utilizing uh, Guillouette as he's back in the game here. I mean, he's such a force in the front court. You know, if you can feed him the ball, uh, that'd be huge. Hey, Will, are they yelling at us or with us? With us, I think. All I right. think it was a ball blown. That's what I thought. Archbishop Wood comes out in the zone defense. Love that switch up. Coming out of the stoppage from John Mosco. And it makes it a little tougher to get the post entry into Gillouette as well. Jalen Harper, now you see me, now you don't. A yeah, great right-handed scoop layup, extending that right arm out, making it essentially unblockable. And got Carson Howard just the least bit on those heels. <laughs> Dribble drive. Deuce Maxi, Salem, what a play. Little, well served to pull this one out. Yeah, a little volleyball going on around there, and Jalen Harper had Josh Reed in a box. That's a great look for Maxi. good find from Salem. That's the first of those wide open threes in quite a while. Feels like it hasn't gone down. Carson Howard, great job to defend without fouling. Got to get back in the play though. Jaron McKee. One point contest, five straight for Arch for uh, St. Joe's Prep after the timeout. Oh, I mean, Jared McKee from the corner. Guys, that's a money move. You give him the ball, he'll knock that down with ease. Yeah, and with the step backs that he's been hitting today, you knew the wide open one was gonna fall. Jaleel Bethea goes offhand, one-handed there to rise and fire. The PCL MVP doing his thing for Archbishop Wood, getting to a spot where he's comfortable. Going up with two hands, then moving just to one. Nice play. Two minutes left in the third. Gillouette's been able to get where he wants to go. Maybe not as strong going up as he wanted to. And the big man leads the charge. Salem for three. Howard is contacted and one. Bob, let's go back to the replay here. I thought Olin Chamberlain had a surefire charge. You see him falling to the ground. Carson Howard bowled him over. Tough no call, and then Howard gets the offensive rebound, goes up with it. Great job by Archbishop Wood to take advantage of that uh, odd man rush, if you will, but man, Olin Chamberlain was frustrated on the ground, and I don't blame him. He, uh, 6'8", Carson Howard bowled over him. And that same 6'8", Carson Howard just got the gym charged up here with that and one. Huge three-point play here for the Vikings to extend this lead. Howard, an improved free throw shooter, but couldn't knock that one down. He had some clutch free throws against St. Joe's Prep in their last matchup at Kelly Fieldhouse, though. Salem stayed with the back cut. Contact, and the call comes late. It's going to come from the referee right in front of us, and that's why Archbishop Wood fans aren't going to like it. It was late, and it was from the official over here. But again, the game is about angles and windows that some officials don't have. And that official had the best view of the body contact riding into the shooter, Jalen Harper. And I do think it's the right call. Right, the beautiful thing about that call is the official who made it was in a similar situation and a simil similar view that we have. So on the, on the replay, you could see that little contact. That was the same contact that the official saw. Jalen Harper rattles the second home, just make it a one possession game, three point game here with a minute and 25 remaining in the third quarter here in Warminster. Salem does create the space to avoid the five second call. Good find. And Milan Dean will pull it back out. One minute and seven seconds to play in the third quarter. St. Joe's Prep ratchets the pressure. Too strong off the glass and Gillouette. Now they're gonna lead the run. Jalen Harper, how does it not fall? Let's adjudicate this correctly, guys. That's a good job by the officials and by the young men out there on the floor. First off, how does that not fall? And then this is gonna be two guys, all ball, and they're just trying to rip it from each other. 
And in the no end, you, you see a little contact, but that was just Deuce Maxey getting Jaleel Bethea away from the play. You said it best, Bob. Great job by the officials. Great job by these players. And then everyone in this gym kind of clapped it up at the end. Respect for the hustle. The Philadelphia Catholic League basketball doesn't get better than this. Listen, you saw something the other night in New Jersey that went a different direction in a situation like that. Hands together for these individuals for handling it correctly here tonight. Forty-two point five seconds remaining on the clock here in this third quarter. It's a three-point game. And look at that, Jaleel Bethea is coming out of the game, presumably because there's only one or maybe two possessions left in this one. A chance for a little bit more of an extended breather. It's yep. a three-point lead for Archbishop Wood. Something that Jay Wright was famous for, giving Jalen Brunson those extra blows at the end of uh, right before the media timeouts, and getting Josh Reed in there on Jaron McKee. Stayed with him on the step back that's been dynamite all night. Harper. Wow, there was oh, minimal man. contact there. Minimal contact. If anything, it's like a flop warning at the college level. They end up calling a block after the shot doesn't go in. Yeah. Man, a, a, no a, way. A, a comedy of just unfortunate events there. My goodness. I mean, yeah, we saw that with the, the late whistle. I, I, I'd be shocked to even think that the refs are confident in that own call right there. And, and, and especially because the, the whistle was so late. At that point, Jalen Harper had yeah. a wide open layup. That's true. That, that you just, you let it play, right? If you deem that there was so, uh, uh, I don't get that call, Bob. <laughs> it's one of hundreds, though, and these guys have done a great job all night. No, there's no doubt. And it's been such a physical game as well. I know I've screwed up a call or two tonight. <laughs> Bethea with nine now. Maxi, he's going to get baseline. Really nice floater. Two seconds left. They don't get it in in time. If they had moved quickly there, they might have gotten a half court heave. But we'll go to the fourth quarter with a three point lead for the home Vikings of Archbishop Wood. A look inside this John Mosco led huddle. With a sea of yellow behind him. I can't say enough about this atmosphere. It's really interesting because I feel as if at a lot of venues, coaching staff selects to put the student sections not right behind their bench. There we are. We got another shout. We appreciate it, boys. Why do you think they go with that here, Will? You played for LaSalle for four years. Thoughts on a student section behind your bench versus across the way? Oh, I think that would be a, a great um, type of atmosphere. And just uh, when you... Joey Shields oh. getting a little chant now. Oh. Our cameraman, the great Joey Shields. Warminster's finest. But no, uh, <laughs> I think something that uh, might be a part of that is a lot of times you'll see benches you know, doing defense chants and stuff like that. And then in that case, you kind of get uh, more unity and, and more uh, continuity between the bench chance and the student section chance. That's, that's maybe one aspect of it that improves, but I, I just like the, the atmosphere for sure. Why not? Why not? Yeah, I think it really does energize these players. Uh, you know, of course, in, in a, such a, uh, an immense quarterfinal game like this, you know, you need the players to be as charged up as possible, as in the zone as possible. And, you know, I think it, uh, both student sections are on a tremendous job of that tonight. I mean, there really has never been a dull moment in this gym this entire game. Heading towards a photo finish. Your broadcast crew, Bob Long, Will Ryan, Danny Roby, and Joe Shields. There's a foul call that'll send Ellerby to the line. And before we do, can't break without saying thanks to Brady Joyce for his great work on the camera all year, watching us from Canada here tonight. Jeff Shirilla who's helped us out with stats a few times, made a new friend in the basketball community this year. Appreciate Jeff, our buddy Bruce Badgley, who's done games with us over the course of the year as well. He's doing another contest tonight out in Berks County, and we appreciate that. And look forward to going home and watching that one. Yeah, and a couple shout outs to the people watching. We've got around 630 people watching right now, so I'll be remiss. Uh, I'm definitely gonna forget a few, but 
Special shout out to Parker for tuning in, uh, Hayes for tuning in, Ryan Mack for tuning in, uh, amongst many others. Our buddy Chris Carabello from LaSalle High School just gave us a shout as well and said, we're doing a great job, which I know he means you guys, Will and Danny. That's happy you too, to have Bob. You guys. Come on now, <laughs> come on now. <laughs> happy to have you guys along with me. Oh, nice slip by Gillowet. The power dribble as well. That's just so seasoned by the junior. And to be quite clear, we weren't really seeing this last year, Bob. Tristan was a solid player on a, on a good team, but the, the step up that he has taken you know, to a second team all Catholic player his junior year, it's just been tremendous to watch. We've seen him been uh, fed the ball the entire game. He's done a great job maintaining composure in the interior. What a job by Harper, almost came up with it. Yeah, McKee clapped at the end there, probably a little frustrated that he was fading. He had more space than he thought, could have gone towards the basket. Didn't have that much space though. Carson Howard was doing a great job to close out. One point contest, and again, it's Salem on the ball. Keep an eye on that. They've run Bethea off the ball a lot tonight. Way to get rid of that basketball. Gus Salem is open. Bang! Big three from the senior transfer, Gus Salem. Yeah, he's been doing it all year long in these situations. Against St. Joe's Prep at Kelly Fieldhouse, he hit a couple big ones. At Cardinal O'Hara, he hit a couple big ones. Oh, the we clock stop just that. turned yeah. off. Yeah, I think you could see <laughs> that in the top yeah. right corner of your screen. Yeah. There it is. If we can't do TV timeouts here, guys, <laughs> certainly electrical timeout. <laughs> now, and I don't think it's really affecting either team there. St. Joe's Prep wasn't on the drive or anything of that nature. They were basically in the half-court set. And to give the folks here at Archbishop Wood credit, they got the scoreboard right back. McKee. Lost his footing a little bit, was probably thinking about a step back there. Deuce Maxey is the guy who gets the task to guard Jaron McKee. Tough shot, won't go. Jason Harrigan really wants the foul call, but Thea, he was open instead of attack. And wide open. Do it again. Jordan Ellerby. Ellerby right there getting up, man. Oh my goodness, what a slam. How about the outlet by Gillouet, too? He absorbed a lot of contact by Milan Dean. Bang! Oh my goodness. Jaleel Bethea. That Something right to say to the St. Joe's Prep student section as well. That right there is what MVPs do. They go back in the answer with a huge three. What a play from Jaleel Bethea. Every basket feels like a huge momentum swing at this point. Gillouette, skilled but didn't finish. And they wave that off. That's going to be the difference between foul shots and not. Just the 15 foul against the Vikings. And I've been critical at times. It's a very tough game to officiate. I think that was a great call yep. there. He got whacked on the rebound. Yep. Nice job by the baseline official uh, keeping that on the floor. I agree. You're yeah. going to see it again in super slow-mo here. And the hit is right there. I mean, still a great job, though, on the resiliency from uh, Guillet to, to put that right back up, even with the uh, the contact. I agree, Danny. That's one he's going to want back. He needs to finish that. He knows that, but stayed with the play, got to the opposite side of the block, and, and gives, went right back up with it. And gives his team an extra possession as well. Uh, he's been very resilient today. Hasn't had a whole lot of breaks. Number 21 in black deserves all the props he can get. Gorman had a huge first half. Hasn't done as much here in the second. Gillouette. The double doesn't come, so he takes it himself. And Carson Howard did a good job. It's not in Archbishop Wood's DNA to slow it down. And I don't think you do at this point either. But at some point, that could be part of the paradigm. Wide open. Maxi halfway down. It's a good shot for Archbishop Wood, though. You'll take that. Harper creates, and he's blocked. He almost put it back in. Bethea wanted it on the fast break there. Deuce Maxey 
Just a sophomore, but he knew to slow it down. Jaleel Bethea does it again. Tell you what, that's why he wanted it, because he was feeling it, number one. And they rise here at Archbishop Wood. A full timeout taken by Jason Harrigan as Archbishop Wood has opened up an eight point lead with 447 remaining here in the first, uh, the fourth quarter, excuse me. Winning players make winning plays. Jaleel Bethea doing just that. Tell you what, Danny, there's about six winning players on St. Joe's Preps bench as well. They're gonna have an answer, and that's what's so fun about it. Oh, of course, but I mean, Jaleel Bethea right there, I mean, it He's the X-Man, Bob. I mean, he right here, uh, right now I'm wearing an Allen Iverson shirt underneath my quarter zip. And let me tell you, Jaleel Mathia is the answer for this Viking squad. I mean, he's been proven tough this entire game. That was a huge play right there. He's been spot up all around the court. When they need him most, he delivers right there. And he's the answer for this team. Largest lead of the night, Will. Eight points, 447 to go. With the pace that these teams play at, that is an eternity. And what happened last time Jason Harrigan took a timeout? A quick 5-0 run for the prep. So you cannot count the Hawks out of this game. What an atmosphere. What a crowd. Sold out here at Richard R. Kelly Gymnasium. And thanks to everybody watching alongside on YouTube. Hey, if you haven't already, please hit the like and hit the subscribe. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. We're gonna have Catholic League and we're gonna have PIAA State playoff action throughout the late February, March time frame. So join us for the ride. We can't wait to have you. Carson Howard got the block. Did not go for a single head fake from Gillouette. Salem, what a job to keep the ball after he lost his footing. Bethea again, you got it! And it's your little Bethea right there, just having fun out there, letting it fly from the corner, bang, bang, give him three. Count it, and one! That's all in Chamberlain, and right when they needed it. I mean, yeah, this game far from over, and of course, like you said, Bob, the pace at which these teams play with, both that, uh, that number on the clock there and then the lead, uh, you know, is definitely uh, not to be taken for granted here. That was a huge play from Allen Chamberlain. Draws the end one, three-point opportunity at the charity stripe coming up now. That's a huge finish there as well. That's not easy to finish through that contact. Ball may be just released, if that. What a big miss at the line. It's a nine-point lead. The largest lead was 11. And now a grab, and you know what? Do you blame Jordan Arlaby? You gotta be in the pocket of Jaleel Bethea to keep him off the board right now. And in the time scoring situation, that's not a bad play. You'd rather take a foul and have a dead ball rather than Bethea come off a screen and knock down another triple. He's already hot, you don't need him to be in fuego. Josh Reed, good finish. How about the second half for Josh Reed? Ellerby though, hammered, absolutely hammered. And then Deuce Maxey did put a forearm into Tristan Gillouette. Very, very fortunate wow. to not be called for a technical foul. Yeah, Gillouette was going to pick up his teammate who just got clobbered. And Maxey took exception to that as well but I don't mind it because nothing ever escalated out of it. So I don't mind just a conversation between his teammates and it looks like Kyle O'Neill had a quick word with him as well. As in not another one. Yeah, absolutely. The next one gets called. Absolutely. Don't mind it at all. Don't mind it. Will, you mentioned earlier in the game the proficiency of Ellerby from the line. Yeah, there's no doubt. Ellerby, a 83% free throw shooter, and we've seen it on display today. He got hit on the three-point uh, attempt earlier in the first half, and now 
And we've seen it all from Ellerby, truthfully. We've seen a couple of high-flying dunks, and now we've seen him uh, convert at the one. Yeah, Will, I, I completely agree with that. I think that uh, Ellerby's athleticism is, uh, you know, certainly, uh, you know, something remarkable. I mean, you see him jumping up uh, from outside the paint uh, for a lot of these layups, and, you know, does a great job with that. Bethea is desperate for the basketball. Yeah, he works so hard off the ball, too. He'll set some off-ball screens if it means he gets open. Wide open. How do you leave him? See ya. Big finish. Boys, I mean, it really feels like there is a magnet attached to that net whenever he shoots the ball. Another brilliant stroke from Bethea. Corner three. Ooh, tough time. So, again, let's get this replay. You're going to look at the scoreboard, the Dactronics. Clock goes out right there. Bang. O'Neal thought about calling it. It came back off the board. And right about there, you're not going to hear it, but there was a sound that came, like a buzzer, like when someone's at the scorer's table and coming into the game. And O'Neal stopped it. You saw when he stopped it. The ball was loose. I think Archbishop Wood was corralling possession. But Will, that, that's tough if you're a Hawks fan as well. It's just a tough position for the officials to be in. And a tough position for the uh, scorekeeper to be in as well. She was just doing her job trying to say, hey, the, the clock went out, the clock went out. Looks like we're going to have a conversation between the officials here, which is the right thing to do. Yep. Uh, figure out just exactly I don't, where I don't know that, what you do. Yeah, I mean, it looked you, like you, Archbishop Wood was going to get the rebound, but you cannot assume that in that situation. You know what I'd do right now? I think it probably I, goes to the table, right? I, I would go to the alternate possession. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely right. Yeah. I would go to a dead ball, jump ball situation, and which, I think that's what they're going to do. Yeah, which would benefit Archbishop Wood, I believe. So no harm, no foul in that sense. Uh, I, I like that job by the officials. Let's see, did they say it was a jump ball or did they just award Archbishop Wood possession? Well, I, I don't know. Yeah, oh my I don't goodness. know, we don't have that flashing arrow either way. It looks like the arrow's still pointing towards Archbishop Wood if that means anything. Interesting. Yeah. If that means, we don't know if it's been changing all game or not. So you wanna be an official, huh? <laughs> it is not easy, folks. These guys are doing a good job and being uh, put through the gauntlet tonight. St. Joe's Prep now fouling. Sixth team foul against St. Joe's. Josh Reed's been very good today, and, and it's not one-on-one -on -one yet, but Josh Reed is a very, very poor free throw shooter on the season. He was just five for 18 in Catholic League play. Uh, that's a guy that you can foul. I think Carson Howard improved, but a 66% free throw shooter. But so, it's, so there's it's a way, couple it's guys way too foul. early for John Mosco to be thinking about taking those guys out of the game. Absolutely. Now, ball security, much more important. Jaleel Bethea almost finished that one, but St. Joe's Prep will take it. Here they come in transition. Chamberlain, a good look. A little long, but a heck of a job by Gorman to keep it alive. Olin Chamberlain. Boy, does he want the ball right now. Good for the sophomore. Ten-point lead. Howard was all alone. Now it's Reed. Yes! Oh, Reed right there taking flight, guys. Oh, my goodness. How about that leap to the basket? How do you do from upstairs? Ellerby got the roll. I don't know that that was the highest percentage shot, but Ellerby off the bench. He wants the ball too. Time out on the floor, 2.22 to play. Both teams will be in the bonus with the next foul. My goodness, Josh Reed, head above the rim. But then they go down, St. Joe's Prep goes down, and Ellerby, a tough shot, but a good response. Timeout on the floor, a 10 point contest. And obviously, Archbishop Wood just continuing to extend this lead as we, you know, near the, the, the two minute mark on this one. And I mean, oh my goodness, I mean, the, the offensive play call has been just remarkable from John Mosco, and that's what he does. He is a legend. He's a legendary coach. I mean, just a complete figure of Philadelphia high school basketball. Um, and, you know, he's just put on a show tonight, at least from a coach's perspective, uh, and just, you know, creating all these chances for the Vikings. Two minutes, 22 seconds left. Bethea, that's a great cut to the basketball. 
Not a good pass though, Ellerby stepped in. Open three for Chamberlain. And now wide open is Josh Reed, take flight young man. Guys, I wasn't really sure if we still have a basketball net after that dunk. Oh my goodness, what another slam from Reed. <laughs> or a backboard. That one should be gold sending. It's going to go down anyway. Good finish. An aggressive move to the basket by Ellerby. Prep still sticking around. They could have, you know, thrown in the towel after a couple of these high energy plays. They've not, it's still a 10 point game and John Mosco takes a timeout after seeing Gus Salem have a little bit of an issue inbounding the basketball. Just a 30 second timeout on the floor. Well, you had uh, at least one other score from a game that started earlier. Yeah, absolutely. Newman Goretti ended up uh, significantly outscoring Archbishop Carroll in a tie game at half. They went on to win by 20 plus and uh, Rob Wright on his way to that victory and on his way to the Palestra had his 30 points to get to 1,000 points in his career. Only a junior and he surpassed that mark. Congratulations to Robert Wright over at Newman Goretti. It was 32-32 at half. Is Indeed that it was. Indeed it was. I believe the final was 86-61. Yeah. I think that's right. How's 54 points scored in the second half for you? Newman Garetti. Winners of the Triple Crown last year. Catholic League, districts at the 4A level, and states at the 4A level. Bethea kept the pivot foot and finished. 142 to go. Gorman, Ellerby. Yes. Clock's going to keep running. It's a high school level thing. Salem. And a giveaway. So there is life. Is life here from the fans from 17th and Girard. One twenty to go. Milan Dean will go to the line to shoot the one and one. Oh, it's really a tough miss right there. You need that to fall just to stick around in this one. One seventeen left. If you're a Hawks fan, that's uh, it's definitely a, a cringeworthy miss. Yeah, talking to our, our good friend to our right. Bethea is up to 32 points on the day. Just an incredible second half by the PCL MVP. And broadcasting to the world why he is indeed the best player in the Philadelphia Catholic League. Why programs like UCLA want him. Why programs like Syracuse want him. Why programs like Villanova want him. By the way, Will, he had 16 in the first half. So, you know, all game player. All game player, not a second <laughs> half player, Bob. Oh my goodness, is he it putting was, on a show could, this yeah, second you could, half? You can put that quote on a t-shirt, guys. Yeah, I, I could, think you so. Could, you can sell that anywhere you need. That's I promise easy. you it was meant as a compliment. <laughs> 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 my good buddy, Julio. We have fun in our post-game interviews. Tristan Gillouette joined us on a post-game interview this year as well. Great opportunity to showcase the student athletes. Jaron Harper, no good. Salem rises high. And they can feel it now here in Warminster. Yeah, McKee had an open look there at the top of the key. Those have been falling all day. And Joey Shields is going to zoom in on the wood wackies. John Mosco hyping them up. What an atmosphere. What a game. What a game. There have been a lot of really fantastic basketball games played in the Catholic League this year. Overtime games, double overtime games. In terms of quality of play, this one is right up there or tops the ball. There's no doubt. Uh, just an unbelievably competitive game. The stakes couldn't have been higher. It was the highest stakes game all year in the Catholic League. St. Joe's Prep, they're good enough to win a state title this year. And they're going to come up a little short here tonight. Props to Olin Chamberlain. He's been fighting hard this, these last 
I should say the whole game, but he's been fighting hard specifically uh, in this last quarter. Archbishop Wood calls the timeout. Again, a 10-point game. The challenge here, if you're St. Joe's Prep, comes from that high school rule, where after a made basket, the clock will continue to run. So one of the many messages that's happening in the opposing huddle right now, Archbishop Wood, is that if St. Joe's Prep does score, that they're going to let that ball bounce. They're going to force the official to hand the ball to them. They're going to take the four, four and a half seconds before they even think about calling a timeout if they have one. And just needing four baskets at least, St. Joe's Prep, you put that time together, Will, Danny. You're talking about 20 seconds there, right? Four times five, plus a few extra seconds of the ball going through the cylinder. There's just... It's just going to be very difficult at this juncture. And you wonder if they send Jaleel Bethea along to kind of get a... Oh, a cool little play here. Got Knowing it. the rules well, good job. Wow, and I love this. It up. Oh, wow. A late whistle. Call goes against St. Joe's Prep. Milan Dean is fouled. You know, it's almost unfortunate right there. Just from a, a spectator's point of view, you really <laughs> would love to see that play unfold. Josh Reed right there has the ball. He's, he's feet away from dunking it. I mean, like you said, Will, uh, excellent job there from John Mosco once again crafting that play, knowing the rules, you know, making sure that his guys, you know, find the open player and send that ball down in a quick way. And Danny, though the score might not indicate it, the defense has been tremendous today. The yeah. shot making oh, yeah. ability has been tremendous oh, yeah. today. Atmosphere, coaching, it's been the full package. Jaron McKee is blocked. Milan Dean. And St. Joe's Prep will give the foul. Deuce Maxi to the line. There's a look. Reaching for the rafters, Milan Dean. I'm thinking Bethea and Reed, if we can get them. Uh, I think that would be a good duo. We will do our best. We'll have to extricate ourselves. It's a full house, and they don't exactly have a pathway going down. It's a tremendous venue with a ton of character. But we'll try to catch this Wood team. At least they'll be going towards the opposite baseline of the locker rooms. We'll try to catch them going back. Jaron McKee for three. Big rebound by Bethea. He pulls it out and lost it. 14.3 <laughs> to go. Closing comment here on St. Joe's Prep. We knew that there are three Catholic League teams at the 6A level that can win a state championship. These two teams were two of them. Roman Catholic is the other. We knew one of those teams was going to be thwarted of an opportunity to play for a state title. Unfortunately, St. Joe's Prep is going to come up a couple possessions short here today. A tremendous year for Jason Harrigan. A tremendous year for a very young St. Joe's Prep team that will be back and better next year. But this one will hurt for a while, there's no doubt. No doubt, but gaining this experience, that's not something that they'll think about now. But at the beginning of next year, when you have uh, five players, I should say six players all returning, that have this experience, the returning, uh, the reigning coach of the year returning. I mean, this team's gonna be so special for the years to come. Dean missed. He loves it, but it was a two shot foul. Double bonus time for Archbishop Wood, that's a shame. First points of the night for Scoop. Gardner waved off the board. Yeah, uh, the Army football commit on the basketball team as well. He's gonna be mad at Deuce Maxey for knocking down that free throw, he wanted it. Archbishop Wood, in the game of the year, takes down St. Joe's Prep, ends the Hawks' season. No state playoffs, no palestra for St. Joe's Prep. Archbishop Wood, everything still in front of him. Yeah, there's no doubt, what a game, what an atmosphere. Bob's gonna run down and try to grab Jaleel Bethea if he can. We hope that he will be able to, but uh, as we explained earlier, there is about a wall, uh, a figurative wall in front of us, uh, a packed venue here at Richard R. Kelly Gymnasium. The game sold out at around 10 o'clock this morning, but nevertheless, just a great game. 
and it looks like the players are running to the locker room. We won't be able to get an interview, it looks like, unfortunately, except Jaleel is still there. Um, so as Bob tries to navigate the scene on the court, great respect between the players, great respect between the coaches. Uh, this is going to be a tough one for St. Joe's Prep to swallow, but they will remember this game. They will learn from it, and we'll send it down to Bob and Jaleel. Jaleel's actually going to run to the locker room real quick, and he's going to come back. He's just getting Josh Reed for us. Our buddy Jaleel Bethea, after a 30-point <laughs> performance, still helping us out. Number one, PCL MVP, the Bob Long Sports MVP, too. My goodness. A lot of fanfare going on on the court yeah. right now. I mean, who wouldn't want to talk to these guys? Two gigantic performances to send their team to the Philadelphia no Catholic League No doubt an League time down here for Jaleel Bethea and Josh Reed. Take your time. Enjoy the hugs. We're good. We're not going anywhere. Congrats. Let's see if we uh, let's see if we can't back this up a little bit because there is an angle issue. Yeah. We're gonna take you to the baseline here. Wait, wait, wait. Come on in and say hello. Come on in and say hello to him. Bob's got some you. fans as well. <laughs> Can we grab you as well? All right. All right, guys. Well, hey, a lot going on here, but we'll absolve you. A huge win, a statement win, a win that keeps the season going on for you guys. A date at the Palestra on Wednesday. Jaleel, how does it feel? Uh, it feels great. Like, ever since last year, we lost to Ryan at home. We just took that from last year, and we kept that dog in us, and we just put that into this game, and we, we wasn't losing this time. We're here with Josh Reed as well as Jaleel Bethea. Josh, you lit the lamp and you got the place rocking with a huge dunk. How does that feel when you can take flight? It feels amazing. It feels amazing to lap the crowd on this night and we got a chance to play in the Palestra on the biggest stage. Jaleel, when we talked last, I said you're a second half player. I promise you as Miss said in the best regard. Today you're an every game player. 16 in the first half, I think another 18 in the second and huge threes when it was winning time. Three of them I counted in the game's most important moments. Tell me about those. Uh, it was just, I seen one go in, and then I, I was just open after that. And then like, I just shot the same shot as the same as the last time. He's always open, Josh. <laughs> always open. And for you then, Josh, you certainly had a lot of points of your own, but. How do you find a guy that, even when he's not open, he is? He does a great job of moving out the ball, getting himself open, because he's getting, he's getting base guarded throughout the whole game. He does a great job getting open. Did you guys, I'm sure you did, understand the stakes here today? Three teams in the Catholic League at the 6A level that are good enough to win a state title. You guys are one of them. St. Joe's Prep is one of them. Roman Catholic is the other. They have their ticket punched. Somebody was going to go home and not even have the chance to play districts. I assume you guys were aware of that. How did you prepare for this one? Uh, just just practice. We, we work hard and practice, and then all that just comes into the game. That was just, that's just how it, how it went. Simple as that, right? You guys were both a part of a run to the state final last year. You guys know how to play games in late February and into late March. You guys got a lot of games ahead of you, potentially, if things go well. Are you ready, Josh, for? I'm ready, I'm so ready. Was this the, the best atmosphere of the year, and if so, why? Yes, this playoffs. You gotta bring out, we gotta bring out the whole city, the whole state for playoffs. And that's just how I let it, whole state, right? All, all of Warminster. <laughs> How about you, Josh? Best atmosphere, and if so, why? One of the best atmospheres I ever played against. Wednesday. I think we just got to win Wednesday. Well, guys, we won't hold you for too long. We do appreciate you doing this. I hope you enjoy tonight. And I know this guy will have you ready to go over the weekend. For Wednesday at the Plesha, we'll see you guys there.
thank you, thank you. There you go, that's right, dinged up. There are warriors out there, both sides tonight. I mean, it's a Friday night, Catholic League game, place is packed, where else do you want to be? You know, um, it was back and forth, they, they played great, they got, you know, we made some sh more shots at the end and it was great, you know. Uh, Jalil took this to the palestra, it was win or go home, we didn't want to put the uniforms away, so it was a, a tough one. Jaleel Bethea is a guy who can certainly play on the ball. We've seen that at times. Tonight, and I feel like down the stretch, we saw a, a specific intention to get him off ball because of how well he can dance and cut and get to a spot. Right. And that's what we told them. They weren't going to let him get 40. I don't even know what he got. They weren't going to let him get It wasn't far off. I think we had him at 34. Yeah. 34 or 32. 40 again, so he had to move. He had to use his guys. Huck, who did a bunch of his uh, stats, when he has five or more assists, um, where our record is like eight and one, it's crazy. And he shares the ball, he does everything, he rebounds, and he just took over like a couple times, like shots he made with people on his face coming off the screens. He's efficient, he, he just scores, he's a scorer. That was the biggest moment of the game in our minds. Early in the fourth quarter, couple points here or there, Running off ball screens, down screens, off the ball, catch and shoot. There was one on the left wing right there. I don't know how the two guys left them, yeah, right? I don't, yeah, I mean, we were getting them open. We were finding them. They're young. Like, we had guys that we had Ryan here for that play, playoff atmosphere. We had Jalil played in Carson, but, but still, we had a little more playoff experience than they did. And it showed, you know, but they're going to be – uh, you know, Jason coaching the year, they did a great job. You know, they came in here and gave us everything we want. And I didn't think four, five, three, six, anything was going to be easy. It's the Catholic League. There were, are, I guess now were, nine or ten teams that had a chance to make it to the Blestra. We knew this. And this was the one circled on my calendar as the game that, that stood out, not just because of how great a game you guys played in the regular season, not just because of how talented you guys are, but the other stakes. That there was only going to be two teams, one of them was going to be Roman at the 6A level, and somebody was going home tonight that was good enough to win a state championship. Yes, and, and that, you know, that's tough for that. I, I've been in that locker room. Last year we were still able to go on, but, it, you know, we went on the, this championship. When, that, when you got to put the uniforms and it hits you, it's tough. But I know Jason and the kids he had, they'll be back hard, better than ever. Last one for you. You lost the game on this floor last year to get to the Palestra. Really good Ryan team that went to the final and was a possession away. This year, what was the difference? I think, you know, we prepared all year. I mean, all, all week we understood what, what they were going to run, and they really grown up. My, junior, my sophomores and juniors have grown up where they knew to listen to the scouting report, to know where McKee was. I don't think he got any easy looks. And they, they listened, and we were able to run what we wanted to run to keep to get you a little open. So they, they're, they're paying attention. They're locked in. John, it was a pleasure for us to be here. Maybe the best game the conference and the league has produced all year long. Hello to your, your favorite friends. Let's see Who's it. your biggest fan? What's your name? Casey. And what's your name, young man? Craggy. Do you guys like Casey that game tonight? all your games, right? Yeah. Do you guys like this one? That was a heck of an atmosphere. Yep. Get two teams judging us. Okay, two good choices. Guys, thank you. Thanks for being a fan. John, thank you for having me. Back to you guys. Well, we thank Bob, we thank John, we thank Frankie and Casey as well, and, and we thank, uh, obviously, Jaleel Bethea and Josh Reed. Just an absolutely tremendous game. Danny, your final thoughts? Yeah, well, I mean, just to start, Jaleel Bethea, obviously, he's the X-Man, right? He's the chosen one for this Vikings team, and he put on a show tonight. The offense was ran through him. Obviously, uh, special thanks, of course, to, to John Mosca. I mean, he put on a show as well from the coaching front, ran some phenomenal offensive play sets. I mean, this Wood team held firm uh, when, it was, when it got really tough. Um, so just a phenomenal game right here. Will, this is what we live for. As student broadcasters to come here on a Friday night, packed gym, playoff atmosphere there's really nothing in the world like it there's no place i'd want to be or other than warminster on a friday night for some pcl playoff action right here it was a phenomenal game and just absolute props to joel bethaya a tremendous player
Yeah, there's no doubt. This has been the Philadelphia Catholic League quarterfinals on Bob Long Sports. Signing off here from Warminster, it's Will Ryan, Danny Rovey, Joe Shields, and Bob Long is talking to some fans down on the court. But we thank you very much for tuning in, and stay tuned. Hit that subscribe button and click the bell to get the alerts so you know when we're going live next. Thank you, and have a great night, everyone.